Currently plat two. I'm the real Midas, boy. Lads, it's time for part two of my grind from unranked to unreal in Fortnite Zero Build. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the techniques I use to get through platinum. Having reached diamond rank in Zero Builds puts me ahead of about 95% of the players, and there are almost 2 million players in Zero Build ranked. At least, players who have played a single match. So the tips and tricks in this video are gonna put you far ahead of the pack, but there's no need to delay because I go through a bunch of games in this video, so if these videos help you out, be sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below what your current rank is right now and maybe what your secret landing spot is. And of course, use code SARHARD on the Fortnite item shop to help support this channel. Now in some of these games, I'm not going to bother showing my landing spot because the rank mode is much more focused on placement and getting to those end games. But I want to quickly talk about why I don't go for the medallions at the beginning of the game. It pretty much amounts to that you should be using those beginning parts of the game to prepare all your assets for the end of the game. And by landing on the medallions, you're ensuring that you will be in fights constantly constantly for the first couple of circles. And this is really only going to serve to drain your resources, and at the end of the day, many of these medallions aren't actually that good when you're up against a great player. The only real exception to this is the Cerberus coin, which happens to come with a Mythic Gatekeeper shotgun. But even then, if you're running solo, and especially if you're running in zero build, I recommend just getting a secure drop spot first, and then going for the coin holders later in the game. Wow. Dude, the Icarus rings are actual bullet magnets. They actually attract the bullet. That's pretty lame, isn't it? Now even though I just eliminated this player and I'm still in the storm, I'm keeping an eye out for the player that I fired at earlier. Because no doubt with the boss NPC walking around, they're gonna try and get this medallion. Did he make some- Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Yeah, I knew it wasn't the only guy, but I couldn't see that dude in the storm! If you do end up going for an NPC medallion, just be very careful when fighting these bosses because Epic Games has overtuned these guys. They're probably more difficult than the Chapter 2 Marauders if you've been around long enough to get that reference. And they can very easily eliminate you out in the storm while you're trying to fight them and just totally ruin any point gain you would have gotten that round. Wow, dude, did you see that freaking laser? Oh my god. No, dude! Just gotta remember to heal. This is ridiculous, man. Damn, brother! Coming out of the storm, I get lasered by a pretty lit player, and this moment shows why the Icarus Wings are just not a good movement item. In truth, I did waste most of my time trying to get this coin, and that is the problem with these coin drop spots. In that time I should have been preparing with better stuff, I was instead focused on the coin, and put myself in a position where I could be easily gatekept. We're about halfway through Platinum 1, and with the rest of my Platinum 1 grind, I want to teach you guys about controlling your ego. Every now and then you'll see me coming into the endgame situations with zero kills, and sometimes I'll be even coming out of storm. And that's just because I'm playing to how the rank system works. In truth, the strategy of ranked as it is currently is to only take fights at your drop spot. And if you happen to lose the fights at your drop spot, just survive. Stay in storm if you need to, get med kits, banana of the gods, there's so many ways to stay alive in storm. And then just ensure that you get into the end game scenarios, because if you aren't getting into the end game scenarios at least, you're not paying for your bus fare, and you're just gonna be losing points at the end. That was a bad situation for that guy. Let's be real. I didn't have to do much to win that. We actually make it into the top five, but unfortunately we get headshot sniped, and I know it's not fun, but it is just a part of the current meta. A rage-inducing part of the current meta. That's so lame, bro. The second I try to do anything, I get sniped. What happens the game before? 
I get sniped out of the air using the Icarus wings. This next end game is more about respecting angles, and notice how I take my G-Wagon and hide it behind this cliff from the guy who's shooting at us from the top of the mansion. And that's because I'm really saving it for the end game. This Rocket League car comes in and he does not respect the angles at all. There's five times he could have just stopped the car and hid and he would have saved himself. And instead he gives us an easy top three, which we almost cap into a victory, but honestly we did miss position here. Looking at the circle in retrospect, we definitely should have looked behind us when we shockwaved up this cliff, and pushing to the middle edge of circle to secure this elimination was definitely the thing that got us eliminated in the end. Lame. We should have never moved. Should have never moved. Should have never moved. I threw. However, as you can see, that game got us 56% and put us well into Platinum 2. And since I was having problems finding healing items, I decided to start going for the Medic NPC, which is actually not that pricey. And thankfully, your gold crosses over between the ranked mode and the public lobby modes. So before your rank sessions, you could always go farm gold in a pub lobby or even in Team Rumble. Now this drop spot is pretty good, not only does it have a car, but it has some ambient healing as well. But over the course of these next few games, you're going to see why the medic NPC really doesn't work in the ranked lobbies at the higher levels. And I think it really comes down to that you gotta stay still and let the NPC catch up to you. And if the NPC is aggroed by any other player, it's not going to try to heal you. What did I hire you for? Give me some health. Why did I hire that NPC, dude? I decided to drop for the other medic NPC, and I found that this spot was more contested more often, and it did have more assets such as some fishing spots and vending machines as well. It's also a train station, so the train tends to come through here and you could lock in that loot, though some players do lock it in right off the drop. Ultimately though, I think the medic NPCs are quite limited in their utility, and I didn't find much use with them the entirety of my time in Platinum 2. It's just incredibly hard to disconnect from a fight with a really good player, and more likely than not, they're going to be on top of you before the NPC even gets a chance to do their job. We got the shocks. We got to get this guy out or he becomes a problem for us. This guy ends up running away to another drop spot that is no doubt occupied by other players. So instead of chasing him for an ego kill, I double back to my drop spot to finish looting it out. And I get some great stuff and secure my spot in that top 15 where the value of elimination spikes up dramatically, not only in terms of ranked points, but it's also important for controlling the circle and future variables so you can maybe get that victory. Currently plat 2. I'm the real Midas, boy. He's got Cerberus coin. Jeej. Really? Let's go! He actually tricked me. I don't benefit on that anymore. I'm done chasing that guy. I don't even know where he went. I'm going to let this end game play out without any commentary, and I want you to note how much information I'm taking in, my awareness of where players are, my possibilities and alternate routes, and even though I lose my car, I lose my NPC, and I'm absolutely getting torn up from all sides, I'm still managing to stay alive and squeak out a couple of extra placement points. If there's anything I could have improved here, it's that I probably could have gone for the building before anything else, but sometimes it really is luck of the draw, where the Spider-Man pushed us and he had no awareness of where we actually actually worse. Keep surviving. Keep hustling, thriving, surviving. There's a dude over there with scope. We see that, of course. This is a decent spot. I want to go for building. 
it's far away from the storm. And we're back here. Oh, no we're not. We're over here. That's so lame. Come on. Don't touch storm. No, I was trying to run again, but it wouldn't cancel it. It was like I was stuck in the bandage animation, bro. I probably wouldn't have survived anyway, but like... Bro, what actually compelled that Spider-Man to take that 50-50 like that? In the next game, I lose my drop spot, but I still manage to put together a decent loadout by the end game. I go completely unnoticed until I start trying to snipe players, and then of course, some crazy person pulls up on me with a car and an NPC. I was like, if I don't hit that heady, we got in a weird exchange there. Isn't it crazy how, like, recklessly people play, though? He wasn't thinking about the storm at all. I don't know. The thing is, you never know the situation someone's running from, too. That guy could have been running from death. And ended up over here on accident. Sorry, brother, it just be like that sometimes. After that free kill, the circle pulls back to lavish layer, and I spend most of my time inside hunting for heals. And if you're low health or low assets, you definitely want to be in one of these bigger buildings because all those nooks and crannies give you many places to hide, and it's definitely what gives me the advantage to get this next elimination in this pretty simple fight. I make it into another pretty tense endgame and unfortunately I make another bad positioning play. My thought here was to press the player on this side of the river with me further down so that he would encounter the other player before me, but instead we got in a confrontation and it probably would have been smarter to shockwave across the river and just try to shockwave the other player out of storm considering the equipment I had. Definitely a risky play but sometimes you just gotta go all out to see if you can get it done. Instead this game turned into another throw but it was a very high rewarding game. There's two. They should fight each other. Damn it, bro. Oh, I got killed by the other guy. Of course I did. No. It's just like, it was a two-way street, bro. I shot at him and he also bum-rushed me at the same time. In the next game, I actually come up short on my drop, and another player hires the NPC. However, by utilizing all of our assets at the nearby train station, I managed to get the elimination and regain control of the drop spot. And I guess the lesson here is just to be patient, because I notice a lot of players will grab one gun and go into battle. But it was truly having full shield and having a spread of items that gave us the advantage here. Did he just keep running? He did. See, it's giving him away. It's actually giving him away. That's all my ammo for that, though. Dude, these NPCs are actually kind of bad. It takes a while, but more players show up to our drop spot, and they don't actually finish their fight. However, we're able to capitalize and get one more elimination. But because one of the players is still left alive, I decide to stay in the storm for a while, because understanding the psychology of players means you have to know they will gatekeep you. It's by far the easiest way to get eliminations, so if a player knows you're in storm, you have to expect them to be waiting for you. Really? That was not the better of the two players. We can we can definitely say that. By the time I come out of Storm, I'm a completely unaccounted for variable, and I'm able to pick up two easy kills just because no one knows that I'm there. Damn, bro. That was a bit savage. It was easy for me, but...
However, my awareness of these fights is keen, so I back up from the island because island is never a good place to be under. And often, I don't even contest it since the items you get from the flag capture aren't even really worth it. However, in this entire game, I never found equipment like shockwaves or portabunkers, and that really is enough to sink your end games in zero build. I also gotta note that the players are much more aware, and they're much more aggressive at the edge of circle in these end games now, which tells me that we are fast approaching those diamond lobbies, and many of these players are probably already in diamond, if not higher. That was so awkward. He just kind of looked out with his equipment, bro. God damn, I just didn't have equipment. There's no way to like change up the fight, essentially. But I was only one good game away from reaching Diamond myself, so I landed at the same drop spot because consistency truly is key. I'm able to dominate it very easily and get my hands on the NPC myself which gives me tight control over this area, and surprisingly, a lot of people tend to rotate through here, I've found. That was dicey. That was really, really dicey. Unfortunately, I ended up getting tagged from the side and isolated pretty quickly. But I really gotta put this down to Epic Games developers. There's something about the way that they do these bounty and medallion circles where people are never exactly in the middle. So it makes it very hard to actually keep tabs on people. Just one of those systems that has been downgraded slowly over the course of many seasons. That's great. Really? 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 That's so f Didn't even earn that kill. And what can I say? Having gotten to diamond in this game right now, it's people are just getting kills they don't earn. It, like he just comes up, he's on the house. So in this entire circle of his medallion, he's over here in the circle. He's not in the center. He's on the edge of his f circle.